me welcome to the cast of Spartacus. Come on up, let's bring up Manu, Liam, Daniel, Nick, Steven, Katrina, Anna. I thought they were all walking. There we go, we're walking. We're walking. Alan. Hey guys, I think I think we should kill the mole. We should do that. We should kill yeah. the mole. Oh wow, that's a big crowd. It's a big panel. Oh, here we go. Asha, Asha is going to. Ladies Nick Terabe. Asha. Ah, oh, take it all, baby, yeah. Come on. <laughs> Stop on the front, just in case you don't. That's nice. We, I feel a long way back. Does anyone feel like moving sort of oh, further forward? Oh, is it the, the, the lights? lights. It's, it's the probably lights. the lights. It's the light. You can, yeah. you, can, you can spit about a half a panel up if you want. Yes, you can go Don't worry. <laughs> Who is that out there? I'll tell you what. If they ask us questions, we'll go up and kind of do the catwalk. There you go. <laughs> so yeah. we have to introduce <laughs> ourselves, right? So who are you, Manu? Uh, my name is Manu Bennett. And uh, for this wonderful series, I mean, amazing series. Woo! Uh, He's so got, sexy. Yeah, I got the privilege to play, uh, you know, it's, I mean, you know, I, I He doesn't I think, remember his character name anymore. I, I, I just think our fans love our show so much because there's so much heart to all the characters so yeah i mean i was just lucky enough to play crixus and crixus yeah the undefeated goal and how about you my friend uh, i'm liam oh. mcintyre i got the privilege of uh being the, the second spartacus so lucky i'm i'm a lucky man Woo! uh my name is dan furigal and i played agron yeah. Yeah. Oh, well done Hi guys, my name is Katrina Law and I played Mira. What's up? <laughs> hey guys, my name's Steve Dunleavy and I played the Egyptian. Yeah. Yeah. yeah! Hey guys, Ellen Holman and I played the Saxonator. <laughs> Hello, I'm Anna Hutchison and I played Lyta. <laughs> yes! Hello everybody, I'm uh, Peter Mensa and I played Doctore. <laughs> <laughs> I look a little different. But I, I don't think that's accurate, Nick. <laughs> don't ruin he it for He just lost his tan. <laughs> All right, so what we're looking for, and I don't really, can't believe you guys haven't already done it. Start lining up here if you have questions for the cast. Meanwhile, I will start with our most generic questions. Uh, tell us about what it's like working on a show where almost none of the sets are real. It's good. It's awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, great. Yeah. Does, does this mean that you're always in the air conditioning, regardless of arena or woods or? Uh, I wouldn't say air conditioning. It's New Zealand in the middle of winter. We're <laughs> naked virtually the whole time, so. So it's actually very cold. Outside. It's very cold. Yeah, yeah that's what we tell cold. everyone yeah, in those yeah, naked yeah. scenes. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, fellas. Oh uh, yeah. The gladiator bathhouse. Yeah. Oh, boy. <laughs> Yeah, I'd say it was an air, it was air conditioned by the by nature, <laughs> freezing. Um, they decided, yeah, like yeah. why film in summer when you had to be naked? Well, one of the things that you you would never know, but in the middle of winter when we were filming, we'd get there at like 5 a.m. in the morning, and it was a big warehouse that had no heating, so it was it was really a freezing box, and we would have to chew ice, so that our breath didn't wasn't warmer than the air, and uh, that was that was something that was just crazy so uh, having to chew no but everybody you did you have to do that you i think i did it once ice? and yeah. i think at some stage i went ah come on now <laughs> but um I, I think one of the cool things was that most of uh, most of the the green screen was actually just atmosphere and, and and like the the arena and all that sort of stuff there was a lot of the sets were practical so we it wasn't that much green screen so um you know it wasn't that you know it wasn't that difficult in that regard but uh it it certainly was fun um they built some amazing sets and every couple of weeks we got to go onto a new set and uh it just it was uh, fantastic so yeah one of the best sets that they had were um i think it was season two episode three where they had the mines. <laughs> you used the man. word best set there. I'm <laughs> wondering the where this is going. They were best set because they actually felt like you were in the mines and you could literally die at any second because they were that terrible. And then they covered up, covered us in this mud that basically, um, oh, am I echoing feedback? But it would basically rip off your skin if you touched somebody else and you got stuck to them for a second. That was hilarious. Was love. Or remember that in that, the last episode where we had made that blood sort of 
Our blood mustaches. Yeah, and, and then the sticky, the, we stuck together for a while. It was quite nice. Yeah, um, we bonded, like, <laughs> literally. <laughs> yeah! Exfoliant. But then there was, the, there was the hygiene of that water as well, because I think at least maybe half of the cast came down with, like, dysentery or something. Yeah, I did. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's what that was. It's so dirty. Remember somebody got an infected foot, and it was like it turned uh, into, like, something yeah. uh, quite nasty. I think it might have, was it Cynthia? It could have, I think it no, was. It, it, yeah. it was actually me, guys. Was it you? <laughs> it was me. Oh, it was you. Yeah. Uh, I stepped on that thing. They oh, had, like, yeah. They decided Sorry, to put, like, we'll glass just, and nail. We'll, we'll get Yay. back to There's okay. a huge okay. crowd of people wanting to ask Let's questions. Ask questions. We're sorry. Yeah, keep going, please. <laughs> How you doing, cast? Really hey. good. Hey. Hola. Yeah. Hi. First of all, I want to say you guys did a great job. Thank you very much for, Thank you. Uh, for producing that series. My question is for Manu. <laughs> dum, 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 right? That was, good. that was good. That felt good. The last scene, uh, Kill Em All, from Blood and Sand. 13. Spoiler alert. 13, yeah. Okay. When you asked Lucretia, where is Navia? Yeah. And then you screamed out, where? Yeah, yeah, when I stabbed her. <laughs> Just like that. Yeah. Like oh, that Kermit was, the Frog. You, you know what? You know what? I never drank a drop of alcohol during the whole filming of Spartacus. It was my mantra that I wouldn't go, that I just wanted to be absolutely clean. And just before that scene, I ran into the Spartacus bar that was at the back. You know, we had this Sparty Spider. bar that the first ADs had made in the back of the thing. And I ran in there and I took a shot of whiskey or something. Because I, because I just wanted to be, just have this something that was floating in my head. Well, that's what I wanted to ask you. How did you get to that point? You look like you weren't even within yourself. I mean, you were just... Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, you know what I mean? Look, look, at, at a point like that, it was very interesting because up until that point, anything that I'd ever said to Lucretia was subservient. And it was the first time Crixus was ever going to say something from his own heart to her, and he wanted to fucking kill her. The whole time, the whole time, it was all, yes, Domino. Sure, Domino. And this time it was, F, you know, it was, I'm about to kill you, B, yeah, know you know. And, and, and it, was, it was like, so yeah, yeah. So, so that moment was just so, I mean, when it came, it came, and it was like, wow. It, was, it, just, it just popped out, brother. That's awesome, man. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. No, nobody tell Nick the score in the football, though. Just, just I'm going to put that out there right now. Because I'm going to keep checking my phone. Yes. Uh, but don't no anybody spoilers, yell that out or he will murder you. No football spoilers, please. That's soccer in America, right? Otherwise, Asher will appear again. <laughs> <laughs> we have to get you some nuts to chew or you something. Don't want none not, of that. not like that. Yeah, right? just, just don't make any bets against him. Because uh, that, that always ends up bad. <laughs> Making bets. Uh, like Barker. You can make all kind of bets, but don't tell me. I also want to make a quick announcement to the parents out in the room, and I appreciate you telling that story as G-rated as you did. That was beautiful. Um, this is a show that is very grown-up in nature, and it may be almost impossible to do this panel with a PG rating. So if you're not the kind of folks that watch this show a lot, you might want to move your kids into another Power Rangers. Show. Or they could get some education about things that they'll learn when they're 18 or 19 yeah. really early. Or 16, or maybe earlier, who knows? Spartacus, our teacher. <laughs> <laughs> we love you, man. Daddy? <laughs> yeah, um, okay, uh, first of all, I just want to say uh, hi. Are you Skyping this? Are you, like, are you I videoing am, this I while am. you, nice. You can't go to my Facebook page after, and you'll, you'll, you'll get to see yourself. Oh, uh, sweet. Nick, first, I just want to say, man, uh, your love-hate character, I love you, but there are some episodes where I'm just like, man, I can't stand after. But, uh, it's in real what? life, too. Me? I wouldn't, you know, I don't surprise that. I'm not surprised by that. Um, wait, 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 wait. What do you mean you're not surprised by that? You don't know me, man. Just, what are you I'm, talking about? I'm just, you know, I had to suffer from that for three years. And I single for a long Let go of me, man. <laughs> kill him. Just imagine if you're telling the soccer scores. <laughs> but, um, Every time. You know what you did? I'm, I'm sorry about that. Um, you woke the Egyptian. Yeah. is towards uh, Manu. Uh, curious to know wait, 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 how, how, how did that happen? <laughs> I hate you, Nick, but my question is for Manu. <laughs> it's, the way, it works. it's the way it's always been. Why <laughs> off That's why time. we had to keep you so <laughs> far apart. Like this. What's your name, man? My name is Brom. What's your last name? Cotto. And where do you live? 
<laughs> but uh, Manu, uh, just comparing with uh, the three characters that you played recently with Azog, uh, Crixus, and Plaid, if you were to say or put them each in a hand-to-hand uh, -hand combat fight, who would walk out? And also, if you would, uh... Ganicus. <laughs> oh, Dusty's not here. I wish he was here. I mean, yeah. just with the training, the extensive training that you guys had to do just uh, for the show in general. Oh, uh, look, I, look, I mean, there was no show like our show for hand-to-hand -hand combat. I mean, Stephen Dunleavy over here, you know, all the, all the boys. I mean, you know, we, we all work so... I mean, talk about the training process. You know, I mean... Saxon lady, you can murder some girls. Dunleavy, uh, uh, yeah, and so, yeah, of course. That's um, a nice arrow work from... You, talk about the fitness things. Uh, about the boys. All about <laughs> uh, have, we, have we jumped questions here about about prepping for? Yeah, well, remember that fitness thing that we had? Where you we kicked our ass? Gladiator boot camp. Bottom. We, we, it's, did all the ladies get to go to Gladiator boot camp? Listen, the story's like yeah. this. Gladiator boot camp, we did a fitness test that was based upon having to push weights that were a percentage of your body, like run with them behind you and lift yourself and stuff like this. Ellen won. She beat all the guys. Which was tough Woo! on the gladiators and the men. It was phenomenal. But if, but if it's a percentage we weren't going to say that, remember? If it's a percentage of her body and she's the thinnest person in the cast... It's still 20... What are you trying to say? It's, yeah. What are you trying to say? It's still, it's still running with 20% of your weight behind you Carried as a Carried a really a cute kitten across yeah. the road. I think, yeah. I think it was by default just because I carried Cynthia over my shoulders. I think that got bonus points. Are you saying she's fat? Oh, she's, what are you saying? She's pure muscle. Deal. Damn right. It's not no, even fair. She's got those Ghana roots. But also, I mean, for whoever who doesn't know, Stevie right here is an Egyptian, and he was one of my guys. And let me tell you something. I love, I love Spartacus and Crixus and and oh, shut up. and all the stuff. But let me tell you, this dude was badass, like real badass. That they had to dull him down to actually make yeah. other, other people look good. So we had some badass people right here. Yeah. This dude right here. I was Woo. so happy he was on my side. I have no idea. <laughs> no, 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 don't do it, don't do it, don't do it, Steve. Oh. Uh, now there's a huge gap in the middle. Later. Yeah, we're putting the ladies in the middle. We're, we're taking this shit over. Oh, sorry. <laughs> that but means actually, like I do, poo. I do want to bring it around for a second to say that the ladies kept up with the boys for Gladiator Boot Camp. It wasn't just the boys who were doing this. It was eight hours a day, four weeks in a row, this badass over here. This thing was watching too, despite being a, a Roman. She's oh, yes. she's got some moves too. <laughs> but it was it was a she did a marathon a with an a broken ankle. Yeah, right? no, she this 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 woman can run a marathon in, in a broke with a broken ankle. But either every single one of us wake up at 3 a.m. and we didn't get home till 8 p.m. every single day, and it was such a physical show, and it's just such a challenging show. Everyone had to exert themselves a thousand percent, whether it's emotionally, whether it's physically, <coughs> sexually. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, it was just a thousand percent challenging across the board, whether you were a Roman or whether you were a rebel, or whether you were a man or a woman, or in between. <laughs> yeah, or any variation. Or questionable. It was an interesting show, kids. <laughs> yes. Um, things happen. I don't know what you're talking about. I spent nine of those hours in my trailer doing nothing. Yeah. Just being like, I'm sorry. Call me when you're ready. I learned how to twerk in my trailer. <laughs> you can thank Miley for that. More questions. Hey guys, I'm really big. Next question, please. <laughs> so, so who's that for? Is that for? Let, let's rephrase that. Before the script was given to you, would you have expected that? Because you know, you realize they get a script long before they shoot. <laughs> it's not like he was surprised or not. Yeah. Wait a minute. Are you talking about third episode thirteen, season one? Or are you, are you talking at the very end, at the end of War of the Damned? Oh, oh okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah no, right. I'm, I'm on the. I was like, wait a minute. Um, well. I kind of went, okay, history has a kind of an idea, stupid history. It's like, what a spoiler. Um, that they're probably going to go with, with that ending, for those of you that haven't seen it. <laughs> um, doesn't end well. I die. Um, uh, for some so, of us, sorry, it's okay. Sorry, Not doing? bad, eh, Dan? We did all right. Us, it's okay. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, no, I, I'm glad that they did that because there was a lot of talk early on about deviating quite a lot from history, and I just didn't think that was a hero's journey for Spartacus, specifically, because um, to do all that and then be like, see you guys, good luck. 
um, to me doesn't strike me as the quintessential hero. So I, I, I'm, the, the way that they, they pulled that together, I, I figured was the right way to do that um, as best as you can, can do it with a show as epic as, as that show. Um, how'd you go in the ending? That was good. Um, Were you surprised to be like, you know? Well, uh, I was aware probably about two episodes previous that I was going to be one of the only survivors. <laughs> Thank you. Um, uh, I, I, I do know originally they wanted to make it an hour and a half episode, but uh, th there was like so much more in there. Um, but they had to obviously edit it out, uh, which was a uh, which was unfortunate. It would have been great to to um, have a bit more like drama rather than uh, fighting. Um, but it, it was it, it filming, uh, especially the very very final scene, was pretty amazing for me because. Um, I've been in it pretty much from the word go, uh, halfway through first season, and it was my final day on main unit, like final day on set, and then basically fi like saying goodbye to Spartacus, and it all just came together and just was absolutely beautiful. It was amazing, you know. A every time a, a character on that episode uh, uh, left, uh, everybody would come on set and you know say their goodbyes, and and, and it was amazing. It, w it really was. Um, we you know we have an idea of what is coming but they don't really tell us too much uh, because they change it, like they could change it while filming. So um, we were kind of aware of what was going to happen, but not specifically, so um, yeah. Hopefully that answers your question. One of the cool things about dying on this set was that because <laughs> people died so frequently, they ended up having this thing called the death day cake. So on the Happy day that you die, death day to you. And a black kind of like this morbid, it's so creepy. This, yeah, this chocolate cake with a candle in it, and you're normally covered in blood, so it just made for a really bizarre picture. But it was kind of a cool little tradition uh, that we had. Wait, wait, I didn't <laughs> see any of this cake. <laughs> uh, Neither did I. <laughs> Thanks a lot. You've ruined my experience. No. We'll get you a death day cake. Yeah. It's too late. That's why. <laughs> well, actually, the death day cake leads into an interesting question. At what point in season one or after season one were you aware of 1.5? Where we were going to go back in time and suddenly dead people were employed again? Oh, the prequel. Yes. The prequel was genius. I mean, really, we were looking at our show being axed. I mean, everybody knows the sad, very sad story of Andy Whitfield. Uh, you know, we, we were looking at being axed. It, the show was going to finish, and uh, there was no way that they could, uh, because Andy's treatment initially, you know, nobody thought that he was going to end up dying from the cancer, but his treatment initially was set out for a year. So he couldn't return to the show for a year, and they thought, that's it, the show's done. And, st and, 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 and well, they, 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 you couldn't put a show on pause for a year. They couldn't do it, so they were going to ax us. So Stephen DeKnight said, Let's go back in time. Let's make, you know, I mean, it was amazing that Batty Artis even became a protagonist and his father was the antagonist. He was like the tortured kid, you know, and then Gannicus came in and, you know, I mean, you know, like, you know, I, I got to not be that arrogant prick from the, f the kids, sorry, from the first series. Bad man. But then I got, I got to go back and do that. You know, there was just so many things that happened in that, in that particular uh, episode. But, but one of the things that did happen as well, I mean, Asher, I mean, there was just, I mean, we all arrived in the, in the prison cell together, in the prequel. I, I'm oh, sorry. You know, like, <laughs> like, how was that scene between you, me, and Dagon? Oh, the first times when we arrived at the, like, in the, in the prequel. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Like, and we were, we were friends. Oh, yeah, that was, that was really, uh, really surprising because we left season one, me and, uh, me and Manu, we were enemy and we hated each other and all this stuff. And, uh, and we got the scripts and I was like, oh, we're friends. Hmm. And then Manu was dragged into the, uh, we had this first scene with him, uh, with me and Dagan and another dude. I forgot his name. Um, and then Manu comes in and, and you see this kind of connection and, and, and Asher in a way is kind of, you know, showing uh, Grixis the ropes. Yeah, you're, you're trying to help me out. You're trying to help him yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he takes off my fucking leg. And, uh, yeah. And that's how. Uh, Hi, kids. Hi, kids. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, this one. Hello. Yeah, exactly. Sorry. Uh, hey guys, I just want to say congratulations on a fantastic series. Uh, thank Liam, you. thank you for doing Andy justice. Well, thank All you. Right? And, uh, <laughs> even though all of you had to talk like you were, like, you know, Captain Kirk, and slowly, slowly <laughs> you know, and, anyway, 
Gladiator, date, 16, 40 feet, BC. And all that. My question is a little bit more detailed. How bad was the dieting? Because I know for women, you tend to be more slim, but men have to try to bulk up and get muscle mass. So you must have been eating protein to the point you were sweating the protein out. You could smell the chicken on everyone's breath. It was just like, wow. And not yeah. just their breath. Yeah. yeah. Am I right? Two words. <laughs> Protein farts. My, my fiance, oh, not yeah. happy. Well, I, I, That's I, how they uh, kept uh, us warm in those areas. It was <laughs> hot. Do, 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 yeah. do. Obviously, people that, uh, I guess, train frequently, the hardest thing is diet. Um, it was kind of lucky because it was provided for us. There was a, a gladiator table, like and then there was a regular table. So we had the choice whether or not we wanted to go and eat off the gladiator table, which was like chicken, broccoli, uh, quinoa, or no rice, or something like that. No and then salt. everything else, which was awesome. Um, and so that kind of helped when it's provided for you. It gives you less of an opportunity to, to you know, break the diet. But that was... I had Tyrone, which meant any time I went near the nice table, he'd be like, hey, <laughs> yeah. I'm watching you. That's right, keep walking. Have the chicken. That's, that's right, have the chicken. Sometimes you'd be standing there chatting to Liam and this man would appear out of nowhere with some sweet potato <laughs> and chicken breasts. He's a big guy. Yeah. And he'd just, he'd just like nothing. He'd just start inhaling a bit more chicken, just talking to you, no break in the conversation, and then the man would leave. The man. <laughs> yeah. We never know who that man is. And it will always be a mystery to us. He might be among you guys. <laughs> so do check the person sitting next to you if you have chicken. <laughs> chicken providers. He has a sweet potato in his pocket. Yeah. Thanks guys, appreciate it. Thank okay, can, can I just can I just say that we have another we have another Spartacus cast member. Something about our show was, you know, there might have been us guys in front of the camera, but there were so many people that were so elemental to, the, to every bit of energy that went into our show. You know, some of the extras were on there since day one. You know, and uh, and, and they were the chef, all the cook, the cook, Cookie, yeah, and uh, and uh, what's his name, the big black man? I forgot his name, but uh, but you know, Fortune, 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 got his own death scene. But there were so many people, and there's a there's a girl in here who really was. She actually, you know, she went for Saxa as well, didn't she? So you, you two were close competition oh at the end roll. <laughs> so Vanessa Carter, get up here, darling, because you deserve to be up here with us, sweetheart. Uh, oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Come on, come up, come up, come up, come up, darling. Yeah, 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 yeah. Come on. We, we, we can't have a fellow bring it back. member bring sitting it back. in the audience. Now this is this is probably what a real gladiator woman would look like. <laughs> Dangerous. What are you trying to say? Well, no, 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 just You're like, just like, You're a just German. Like, uh, no, I can't say that because every time I try to wrestle you, you pin me to the ground and, and, and punch it's me in the true. face. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Vanessa. Hey. Vanessa Carter. Hey. You, you should have walked the catwalk, but all right, oh, never mind. No, no, we'll no. let it slide. <laughs> Hello. I nearly lost my life. <laughs> oh, come on now. It's, 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 it's about Manu's voice. For Manu, for Manu. Uh, we used to do these haka all the time. Whenever somebody would die on our show who was consequential, we'd do a haka to send them off. And every time we did that, I lost my voice. Uh, and then it, was, then it was hard to get... Well, it's, it's a Maori war dance. Because we filmed in New Zealand, we'd give everybody a Maori war dance send-off. But I would, I would lose my voice in that more than what I'd, I'd you know, it really depended on, you know, when, you, when you're yelling out that, you know, the kill them all scene, yeah, at that time, by the end of that scene, lost my voice. Capua, shall I begin, that scene when you do it 20 times, yeah, you lose your voice, mate, yeah, yeah, you got to give it your all. But, uh, you know, it's all part of the job. The voice sounds cool husky, though, don't you reckon? <laughs> yeah. Oh, he got so close. Oh, no, go on. I want to hear that question. The answer, the answer is yes, and all the time. <laughs> I know what you're talking about. Thank you. Especially Dan.
Yeah, okay. Well, Scott, I think, would probably make the most thing that I ever heard. I think I danced. That was pretty good. I mean, it's probably the best thing I got to do. And then I put my mercy on. And then remember when you talked about it. And I was like, I like to work with my friends. And it was really wonderful. I told you, don't do it. Remember when we were working with them? Nick, why would you say that? You blew nothing. But when you got that thing, we talked about it. Fight, 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 fight. <laughs> All right, it's just scratch. Ah, it never gets old. You guys, you've got some great I just want to say something about that guy's question. I think what we all got out of it, you see, we're, we're all mostly, besides Nick. Um, Who's Prince? Nick? Oh, and, and Katrina, sorry. Katrina and Nick. I mean, put it this way. This show was cast mostly out of Australia and New Zealand, so... It was a platform for actors from our countries to actually get an opportunity. We, we, we would never have got... <laughs> yeah, sorry, Ellen, as well. We'd never got the opportunity to actually get a world audience coming from our side of the planet. So the production itself actually facilitated a lot of us to... You know, everybody here is now, now working, living in an L.A., going and doing different projects and... Uh, I have a career. You know, being from the Southern Hemisphere. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Straight from the video <laughs> store. Yeah, I know. Seriously, the, 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 straight, yeah. From, straight from working in a movie cinema, pretty much. Like, literally. I yeah. do think one of the best things that most of us came away from the show was uh, we all have a new family now. Most of us do hang out with each other um, on a regular basis. Most of us are really, really We're not really too busy good working on cool shows. <laughs> but I think it's the friendship. We definitely have developed a family atmosphere with each other, and we're 100% behind each other. So that's probably it. Except for Nick. Nick is terrible. I uh, took away from the show myself. <laughs> and I came back to the States. Yeah. And forget about this family. Eh? <laughs> You're dead to me. <laughs> now you may ask your question, sorry. Sorry. Uh, just wondering, uh, what's it like working with Dustin Clare? Uh, uh, who is he? Uh, who is he? Uh, just, <laughs> what do you do? If, if, if one of the questions would be, who's the biggest practical joker? or biggest comedian, it is Dustin. Just make sure he's not bored. Yes. This this is once, once, he's like a five-year-old, keep him once busy. Once Dustin got bored, good luck. Uh, especially if he was in the background. He hated being an extra. So he would be you know, doing these things to people in the background, like all that sort of stuff. He will be tapping the cod piece. He would be doing random things like that. So that is what working with uh, Dustin is like, um, but like acting wise, uh, at least what I saw was he would give you a performance and you would just kind of be like, okay, it feels like you're giving me nothing because he's just so subtle and quiet and then you see it on the screen and it's just really, really powerful. So, um, uh, it, you know, it was fantastic working with him. He yeah. Would, I, I, he, you know, apart from his goofiness and his kind of like Aussie larrikin as he liked to call it. Um, he was uh, great to work D with, yeah. Dustin could be absolutely hilarious. Like, I remember some certain things that I just... I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah, I know. He, he, he found that you were an easy target. <laughs> but I would corpse something for... Uh, yeah. Serious. This if, is butt if, freaking if, test? Oh, God. Yeah, yeah that was just... That was, anyway. Yeah. Um, yeah, he's... But as an actor, I think he's a sensational actor. And it was one of those things that from... Because I kind of... Uh, I met him in the middle of Vengeance. And from then, I... I it, for me, it's quite interesting. It was like profound how much Spartacus, the character, and my journey was in many ways, there were similarities as I developed as an actor. And so, like, when I first met Dustin, I'm like, well, who's this guy? It's kind of. He's, who is this? There we go. Hey. Who is this? Who is this guy? He was, sort of, was sort of like standoffish and stuff like that, which his character was to Spartacus. And then by the end, we were really, really close and we worked really, really well together. It was quite. It was fascinating. Um, but his actual technical abilities, I, I mean, I, you can see it. He, I think he's a fantastic actor in the show, and I, mm. I, I really got a sense of that working with him. And when I, was, when I worked with him as a, as a fighter, I mean, I, I, you know, I, mean I, I committed myself to Spartacus. I mean, we live in a country where there's not the same sort of legal, uh, <laughs> you know, the liabilities are different. We have a thing called ACC that basically covers injuries in the workplace, so our producers are like, go ahead, kill yourselves. You know, but in America, you can't do that. You, you, you'd sue, you know, it's the studios could get sued, but you can't do that in New Zealand. So we were able to fight at quite a heightened level. And I mean, I, I, I was dangerous. I mean, I, I mean, literally, <laughs> like, you know, and, 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 and a lot of times when I fought with guys, you know, even the stunt guys, there was hesitation because we'd 
we'd throw it all in there, you know, and, uh, but it was something we all became very good at and we could work at. When I worked with Dustin in a fight scene, he never withdrew any of his energy whatsoever. Like, he would be fighting with me like a dog, you know, and, and that was something I really noticed about him specifically. When, of course, he was Gannicus, but he embodied it, you know what I mean? A lot of people were sort of like stunt guys or whatever and not putting the acting level onto it. He put the acting level onto it and the physical level that made him Gannicus, and it was quite, it was quite incredible to fight with him. And he looks so good with that hair. Right? Well, another right. great thing that Dusty would do is that he wasn't worried about the attention not being on him, but inadvertently, it became on him because he didn't, he didn't ask for the camera and he wasn't worried about giving it all away when he was working with you, but because he, he wasn't that kind of actor, you're just drawn to him. There's something about him that's just, he's electric. As soon as he, he's, on, he's on camera, he's just electric. And as soon as it's cut, it goes to like slicing a sword through sets <laughs> or messing with your blood continuity. They love that. Right before, right before a take, you just go like that. <laughs> and then you see makeup just freaking out because in the take right before it's all clean and then you just be covered in blood and he'd just be like, hmm? <laughs> so he, he was a total goof, but at the same time, he just, at the end of the day, he's just magnetic. Oh God, I miss him so much. Why isn't he here? Uh, Manu, you just kind of said about how like you, the battles, he put so much forth through it and it really showed because to me, um, Spartak has had some of the most badass fights I've ever seen in any TV show like ever. And my question was, were there any close calls? Were there any, like, injuries? Oh, <laughs> yeah, 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 I've got, yeah. <laughs> I've, got, I've got a scar on my chest. I've got a scar on my cheek. I broke three ribs. I have multiple scars on my fingers from uh, one time I fought Barker. Right, I was fighting Barker. Antonio is a Maori, like I'm a Maori, and we infused our Maoriness. You know, everybody infuses whatever culture they've got or whatever history in their own kind of you know, in their own way that they could put into a warrior spirit. But Antonio was a Maori, and he's a warrior as well. He trains with the Maori weapons. So he was fighting me with a spear, and I knew that he was going to bring his game plan on this particular day. And I, uh, I came into the day actually not feeling well, and I felt a little bit under the weather. And I remember going into the fight thinking like, oh, I'm not quite as on the game as I usually am. But I knew that he was going to bring his egg. I remember, just, I remember just going into this scene and seeing him just coming at me and leaping into the air with his spear. And I did this shield thing, and I knew it was just slightly slow. I just knew I wasn't in the same tempo with him. Usually I would be, but I just thought... And I lifted up the shield, and his spear bounced off the shield and straight into my eye. But, like, at, at this point in time, we, were, we all had a lot of dexterity. We'd been doing a lot of fight scenes, so we knew how to roll and get out of the way of weapons coming at you. You know, you just get second nature like boxers. You know, so I was rolling by the time it was going into my eye and going back with it and then all the way into the ground. And uh, I was on the ground, you know, just holding my eye. I thought my eye had popped. And, uh, and I came up off the ground and I looked up and... All these guys were behind the monitor going like, oh, what, how did that happen? Well, well, let's have a look. He got the spear in the eye. <laughs> and I was going, I'm on the ground. But yeah, half my eye just filled up with blood. And, uh, you know, but that's what we did, brother. Honestly, we, like, like, we had some moments. Luckily, nobody really got badly hurt. But all the time, fingers... You know, yeah. just just strange and stuff. But yeah, we, yeah, we we all experienced something. Um, I tore my quad, tore my AC. I was knocked unconscious for about I think a it's couple of super super slow motion. motion. It's amazing um, for a couple of it's a couple amazing. of seconds. Um, oh, it's amazing. And, 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> Replay the story, Dan. So basically, like it was a. a you, 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 you move. I'll do what the guy did. <laughs> so, yeah, come on. No, I'll, I'll just. Oh dear! Oh dear! Oh, oh, dear. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. So the camera's there. The camera's there. It's called Phantom Cam, and Phantom is the one that captures the slow motion. So originally the choreography is I'm supposed to like swipe under a guy, swipe and go in this direction. Liam's next to me. Manu's there. A guy's supposed to bounce over Manu, but uh, I think something happened and he bounced that way. This so guy did a cartwheel so kick. So I'm going in this direction. In his movement, he and he went. Crack me there. Crack me there. And, and of course I. Like, Oh. Out and get Which is knocked amazing. unconscious. And so I'm like in the middle of a fight. Two seconds. And I'm like trying to kill these other dudes, and then suddenly I'm like, "That's Dan. That's not yeah, you. I'm, 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 I'm gone. Oh. I'm gone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 
Oh, I mean, God. It, oh God. But my favorite story was, um, I wasn't on set, but I heard about it in regards to Liam. Uh, was it you uh, cracked a stunt guy oh, in the head? Oh, when I squashed that guy's he, face. He went home, he thought he was fine. Now, these stunt guys are tough, tough guys. He went home and basically did this uh, in the shower. His eye almost popped out of his head because he'd fractured his skull. Well, he didn't do it. <laughs> I did. So, okay. I know, I'm not a violent person. I know the show requires me to be, but I'm really not. And I don't handle that well. So, my stunt double, Rachel, who's incredible, but hates everything. Um, he's like, brother, he looks shit. Uh, it's bad. Um, he's from uh, Bulgaria, and Bulgaria. he's like, just punch him, punch him, just hit him in the, it, like, hit him on here, and it'll, you know, he will do the flip, and it was, it was like, he was, I was meant to like, cr clothesline him, and he was going to somersault, and, and it was going to be amazing. I don't like hitting people really hard, I just don't. And so, of course, when any, any time that someone doesn't really like doing it, you like, a little bit. And so I went to like, hit him, but because I was worried about doing it, I missed, and hit him straight in the eye. And all I could, all I felt was like squish instead of hard leather, and went, that's gonna be bad. And then kept going, and then I'm like, oh, that's not good. And he was back to work a couple of days later. Two days later. And then we had Andy, who was one of our stunt, um, oh, stunt the guys. In there was the pit fight with, um, yeah, between him and Peter Mensa, and his Peter Mensa stunt double is supposed to stab the ground next to his head. To yeah, look he's already like, got a scar across his face, this man. Yeah, so he's, he's tough. He's hardcore. He's the real deal. So the, the stunt double is doing the stabbing motion, misses the ground for some reason, decides to stab Andy through the cheek instead. Andy gets up and he's like, uh, 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 uh. <laughs> walks off, super glues himself together, comes back on set, finishes up, and then later for the rest of the day, he's smoking cigarettes and blowing it out his cheek. <laughs> he's like squirting water out his cheek and he's like, ha ha ha. They make them toughen, NZ. Yeah. <laughs> and, you, and you guys were worried about us cursing? <laughs> <laughs> you want us to curse now? Uh, <laughs> oh, well, I just had a kid come up to me over there in the line that said, he's like this tall and he's like, I'm into the K-I-L-L-ing. Not the K-I-S-S-ing. And I'm like, yeah, brother, boom. <laughs> what a seven-year-old. This kid has a lot of growing to do, I tell you that much. <laughs> a years. You'll change. Oh, you'll yeah, change. A lot of <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thank you. Um, this one's for the whole cast. What would you guys say was your favorite fight scene out of all the seasons? Can we do that whole talking again? Please? Well, we'll have two people well, talk. Well, who's uh, Nick, go. What was your favorite uh, fight scene? Can you say the question again? I'm sorry. <clears throat> what, was, what would you say was everyone's uh, favorite fight scene um, throughout all the seasons? How about Nick and Ellen you, answer you, that? Do you, <laughs> you want me to say that? Yeah. Uh, hmm. Ellen, why don't you go first? I can start. It's the scene where I got to kiss this one. <laughs> yeah, everyone's good. I win. <laughs> the, chick, the chick fight with Saxon and Mira. Hands down. <laughs> uh, my favorite fight scene was when I uh, fought Dan in the trailer. Because uh, <laughs> he, would, he keeps coming to my trailer asking me to rehearse the love scene. I'm like, Dan, there's no love scene between me and you. But he was so method. And, uh, and Nick and, obliged. And then I was like, all right, let's try it. Just for the sake of the show. And then we end up fighting. That was my favorite show. That was my favorite fight, I would say. Yeah. Thank you guys. Thank you. <laughs> I like Sorry, that one. We didn't answer that was a good that. one. Hi, um, I wasn't sure if anybody said thank you for coming to Miami. Thanks for having thank us. Thank you very much. Thank us. you. Thank you. Love you guys. Anyway, my question is another general question because it's been on my mind. Does the or did the language of the show ever bleed into your everyday life? Like, I'd be at the supermarket and pay for something, and I'd be like, gratitude. Like, okay. Yep. Uh, apologies and gratitude are uh, ones that I use. When I go to the supermarket these days, it's more like Jupiter's cock. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think. How much denarii for this one? I don't, I don't think I've ever said fucking goals. The kids uh, are gone by now. They've gone. They've gone. Thracian bitch. <laughs> <laughs> That's what that is. Nick was so rude. I was like, hey, it's really nice to meet you. He's Thracian, bitch. So method, so method. Yeah. From the heart. 
but it's not as hot I'm after, so. Ah, uh, nice. Yeah. This night. No. Well you're done. Right, you're right. Uh, <laughs> you get Stan Roman. Thank you, guys. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Oh, come on. Don't be shy. Me. Hey. As, I'm sorry. As your former domina, I forgive you. <laughs> <laughs> and I just want to say that this is the first best birthday ever. And Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Oh. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, my Domino. Happy birthday to you. Next question. Security. <laughs> <laughs> but I guess my the news. Question would be as far as for the ones who did die, especially Mira, because when you died, I know I was crying the whole time. Oh. Um, how Damn you, Was it to feel those death pains, knowing that you know it's her final scene and everything? Um, it was a lot of fun for me because Liam had to carry me the entire oh time. Oh my God. So I technically didn't have to do anything, but it is an emotional day because you do go so, so attached to the people that you're working with. And you know, we were, I was living in New Zealand, I'm from New Jersey, so. It's, it's got a new in it. Uh, it's different. So I found the tears flowed freely that day and um, it was quite a beautiful experience, but just um, to be a part of the show and knowing that this is the last day and that this chapter of your life is over and moving on, but I, I feel like most people go through that whenever they're moving on from one thing to another, but it was it was a really good day. And then my blood solidified to Liam's blood and then we had to peel each other off and then it got weird. Yeah, you know, got, yeah, got a little weird. Got a little weird. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, well, what about Nick? Oh, I was I was yeah. really surprised with Nick's death. I thought, I thought, I thought, well, I, 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 I really wanted, I, I really wanted Asher to kill me. I, I thought it might be the full story arc, you know, and, and, and I, was, I, was, I was hoping and expecting that to happen, brother, honestly, yeah. We, we, we spoke about it. Thanks. Yeah. yeah. How come you guys yeah. ever ask me about my death? Yeah, what the, what the, and, and, and Steve, you got a, a, a sword through the face. Uh, uh, me? Navia's going to ask Navia, you. Navia, what's up? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Oh. I'll call you later, baby. You want to be slayed this it's time? It's a real outfit, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you look good. Wait, this is the real, yeah. the real costume oh. that, that yeah. you wear? Oh, nice. Yeah. Mm. We got to get a picture. Of right next to the microphone, you. right up there, close. Um, <laughs> you guys got me all out of character now. <laughs> <laughs> now, that's pretty much Navia's character. <laughs> if you want, you can go back to people and cut your breath. <laughs> nah, I'm good. You know what? I mean, this was an interesting thing because um, when we came into the season with, with Liam and, uh, and with Cynthia, they were both, uh, you know, brought across, uh, you know, Liam, of course, from Australia and Cynthia from America. And we just... You know, Liam and I had a little bit more backstory. When, when he came across, there were three people going for the role of Spartacus, one of them being Stephen Amell, who I now work with in Arrow. Yeah. Steve, Steve went for, you know, but that wasn't the role for him. He's perfect for Oliver Queen. You know, he's doing a great job with Arrow. But this guy here won it because, you know, I mean, there's, there's, a, there's a truth to the heart that you've got to get to play a role like Spartacus. And this guy had it in, had it in low falls, you know. Um, so, you know... Uh, Yes. I mean, Cynthia, you know what? I had such a great laugh with her. When somebody was asking before about the death scene, the death scene that I had, I had no idea about what to do. I'd, I'd been on the journey with Spartacus for so long that I was, I, was, I, I was completely at a loss with how I would finish it. And I didn't want to make a choice. I just couldn't, I couldn't make a choice. And I got to the day, and Cynthia came up to me, and bless her soul, because she's a great actress, she said, Manu, I'm, I'm, you know, my father passed away six months ago and, and I'm, that's what's going to generate my emotions in this. And I remember just looking at her and seeing what she went through mourning her father. 
And that's what she put into her scene. And I remember the time just really liking Cynthia that much because we'd had such a great time together. But I was just looking at her, just knowing that that moment was r that real for her. And it was amazing how that scene turned out because it was one of the very few scenes in the whole thing where Crixus or me as an actor or whatever completely relinquished control for the other actor's moment. And it was quite special. If you, if you go online, you'll see a photo that's floating around of me kissing her forehead that was taken after the actual scene was shot because she was still crying and still in that moment, you know, and you know, just special things that you go through. So many different moments between all of us, you know, that, that you could you sit down and have a, we will tonight over dinner and talk about all these little moments. But mm. yeah, yeah, you know, it's, uh, I forgot your question, but that's the answer. <laughs> What's your name again? Oh, wow. Oh, awesome. That's amazing. Right up, bring it up here, bring it up here. Bring it up. Run up on, run up, run up on the stage, well, quick. Up on the stage, but then you come up on the stage over Cool. It's very cool. Do you catwalk? It's amazing. You get a picture of them together. Yeah, there we go. That's the uh, shot You guys just play amongst yourselves, and we'll be back to our regular scheduled program in a second. Ah. Uh, All right. Um, yes, jump in there. Take charge. I got more of a request. I was wondering since we got the whole cast here, if we could actually see the hack out of everybody together. What? <laughs> the oh, the Australians aren't allowed to do it. Australians aren't allowed to do it. No, no. And yeah. girls yeah. aren't allowed to do it. And it's it. And women are special types of That's just you, Tarabe. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to protect you from this one since it was covered that that's what blows their voice out and they have to work the whole weekend. Yes. Let's not <laughs> injure our guests. <laughs> is, there, is, there, is it in one of the special features? Yeah, oh, yeah. You can, you, you can YouTube. When Andy was first... Yes. Having his operation uh, for his first chemo rounds, uh, we did a haka for him uh, that was that's online. If you go onto YouTube, you can see it. It's it's a Spartacus haka, and you'll see how passionately everybody performed that on that day. We did another haka when I, Andy passed, uh, oh, and it was yeah, it was uh, it was on the it was on the training ground. Yeah. And not only was it the cast, but it was every single person in our production. Women were standing up on, you know, with the balcony where Batty Artis did all his talk from? We had women up there, like, just wailing during, during the haka, and uh, it was... Woody. But you know what? That haka was only ever played at, at, at Andy's funeral. And it was, it, uh, I mean, you know, it, it, it created such emotion. If you want to talk about the haka, brother, come and see me over there, and we'll have a chat. All right, I got seven minutes and seven questions. Nice. Hmm. Go Best on. experience for me uh, was uh, during first season when uh, we uh, went to the um, the auditorium to watch the first two episodes. I we had no the only thing that we'd oh, seen yeah. was the trailer that they brought out, and I remember the very very first time we sat down, uh, <clears throat> the scene popped up of Andy, and then the camera panned up and it went through the ceiling yeah. of the uh, um, the the uh, you know the Ludus, I believe it was. And just, just the way it looked, the sound, uh, it went into the fighting was just, for me, just gave me goosebumps because I just realized, I went, holy shit. <laughs> oh, sorry, dude. Holy moly. <laughs> um, oh, goodness gracious. Yeah, oh, it, was just, it, was just, it was just a really, really special moment for me because I just realized what show was a, I was a part of. I mean, I was this guy from Australia who watched all these American things on TV. I'd gone through, you know, I'd done a couple of Australian things. And then to be a part of something that you go, wait a minute, I would actually see this on the big screen and it was on a big screen. That was the best moment for me because I just realized what, how special, like, I, this thing was. And so that was my best moment. Um, okay. Can't really think off the top of my head about the worst, but uh, I, I think... You know, I can. I can't think of the worst. Well, that trailer, <laughs> that, that trailer incident did turn out yeah, pretty ugly. Oh, that was um, a great moment. <laughs>
the worst moment, I'm sorry, is uh, no, I remember we were uh, saying Doctor, Peter Metza playing Doctor, and he was always wearing this vest. Right? Oh. And he's like 51 years old. I don't know. Anyway. So he's wearing this vest and we're thinking, oh, he's probably have a gut. And he's probably covering. And there's a scene when he was uh, working with Manu and uh, Andy. And he takes off his vest. Right? And we're all sitting there thinking we're badass. We just did all the stuff. And then Peter takes off his vest. And he's freaking ripped. <laughs> and we're like, what the? Why were they going to that up? Put it back on, put it back on. Like, like, what are you doing? Dude, you're making us all look... That was the worst <laughs> experience oh, in my life. I had to try to watch I him train once. So good. I'm like, he's double my age. I'm like, but I, then I'm like, oh, no. Oh, no. I gotta go. I just, I don't know if I can. That was the worst moment in my, uh, my life. <laughs> That's probably true for all the guys in the show. I had that moment too. I remember I was in the gym and I was it's like, he's, he's just like bending over and he's getting abs. Yes, like what the, or when I was whipping him, I'm like, nah, I can't. I'm like, this is, what, what is this? Put something on him. I just he throw sneezes, something. he gets a new abs. And his and double this is bigger than him. It's just ridiculous. I was like, <laughs> next question, please. <laughs> Every day now of have. our lives. Oh, yeah. That's Hello. right. I think it's only fair that everybody has to flash us as a group. At least for me, I know when we when you first get on there, uh, you realize that you know. I remember the first day, like you're in your little subleg area and your shirts off, and you've got all these guys that have been training for a very long time, and it's very very intimidating. But literally after a week or two you completely forget that you are virtually wearing no clothes. And when you are wearing clothes, that's weird. Yeah. The weirdest part... It is. In fact, the worst right day now. for me... Like, what now? What? what is this Who about? The worst time for me was the... Because in the first season I had, they got us to put under that subleg area a G-string, which I'd never worn in my life. And I was yeah. like, you're joking, right? You are joking. Here's your contract. Go home. And, and then I'm like, ah, oh, oh, how do girls do this? And, um, but then there was a time which I saw, I was like, all right, there we go. Put it. Wait a minute. I am totally fine with putting on a G string now. And that was the worst day of my life. I was like, this is not yeah. what I want. What are you saying, man? Didn't they make you I don't do that? I'm you like this, bro. What's going on? <laughs> they didn't make you guys wear those? Okay. Oh, yeah. You are all alone in this one now. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I'd love that if the costume department was like, he's actually wearing it. <laughs> Right now, everybody's wearing it. <laughs> Not awkward at all. No. Next question? Uh, yes, this one's for Liam. Um, I'm curious, when, when you found out you were going to be the one to uh, take over as far as for Andy Whitefield, how did that, how did that make you feel? Like, oh, you man. Know, I, like your my, reaction. My journey for that was, was crazy because I, I just lost 45 pounds for another role that I was doing, so I didn't look anything like a gladiator, as he can attest. You know, I was sitting in this trailer with people like Stephen and Mel, who were massively built, and I was this scrawny little kid going, why am I even here? What, what's wrong with you people? Why have you picked me? I mean, thanks, but... So the idea for me, because I used to watch the show all the time, and I remember when they fir I first got the audition, they, I was like, oh, I want to be on that show really bad. That'd be amazing. Wow, how lucky. And they said, it's for Spartacus. And I'm like, but it can't be. They've got one. They've, you know, that's Andy. And then they told me what happened. That was horrible. But through all that experience, I was so sure I would never, ever get that job that I hadn't really thought about it at all. And then because I was so small, they got me to train so much for like months and months and months as they were still like, I don't know. Like, I don't know about this guy. And it <laughs> slowly got better. And then, yeah, one day... Like six months, nearly six months, five months later, they said, you're the guy. And then it was like, I was relieved because I, for five months, I wasn't sure what was happening. And I was excited because it was the first role. And then I was terrified because I love the show and I'm a pretty big nerd. And like, for example, when um, Heath Ledger took over, as, uh, was going to do the Joker, I'm like, that's the worst thing ever. That'll be terrible. Oh, you're the worst casting ever. And, 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 and then I saw it, I was like, oh my God, I was so wrong, it's incredible. And so I'm like, I would hate me, I would hate me. So I, I didn't know what to think, I was terrified, but I mean, it, I was lucky because I had such a good group of people 
that that actually that really did welcome me and and, and try to make like like Manu from that first day. I had my audition with Manu, and he came into my trailer as he was he was saying, and just sat me down and talked me through the experiences he'd had with Andy, what was going through in the scene for him. It was just amazing. P things like that that made an impossible task seem like, you know, maybe you can honor this legacy and not totally ruin your favorite show. <laughs> you know, and, 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 and plus, I think, I think the great thing was, was that you, you aren't Spartacus. That's right. No, nobody's Spartacus, right? Yeah. You, you become Spartacus. And you become Spartacus because you lead with an ideal and then you gather people together and you move that ideal forward as a leader. And, and on set and off set, that's, that's what Liam did with all of us. I mean, the moment he got there, he was very cohesive. You know, and uh, I mean, you were under so much pressure, brother. I remember, remember the times we were walking between the caravans and you were getting, producers were coming at him, all, people yeah. were coming at him from every direction, <laughs> trying to tell him how to do it. And it was just about him finding it himself, and he, yeah. and he, and he did. I was, yeah, yeah. I, was in, I, I, was, I thought Certainly. I was so ready that first day. I was like, I got it all worked out, I've done all my prep, I'm, I'm totally ready for this. And as I was walking from the trailer, about 20 people were like, now, Liam, the sound's going to work like this. Like, okay, now, you want to think about this. And the dialogue coach is like, now, with your accent. I'm like, why have you not told me this before? This is really quite a stressful experience. But, yeah, so I became less badass in that moment. But, yeah, no, I, yeah, you're right. It became about finding who Spartacus was. Okay, so we're down to our last question, and we decided to go with the youngest person who was waiting. Yeah. Oh, we swore so much. I'm sorry. How old are you, kid? How old? Yes. What star sign is what's what star sign is that? You have good parents. Perfect. Thank you, guys. Thank you. 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 It's cool. I think you're at a lovely age at the moment. Like, um, mum or dad can take you to drama lessons or little acting lessons or music and dance and stuff like that. So, as or as school, they often have plays. So, if you get yourself involved with all of that now, if you personally want to do it, then later on you can um, you can kind of make a career of it. And it is. It's an incredible, uh, wonderful thing to do when you're working. But you get to come to things like this and meet um, lots of fans and mm. stuff who watch the shows that you've been on. So I think you're at a, you're at a ripe age, mate. <laughs> <laughs> can, I, can I speak on behalf of all the pa of your parents? It's a terrible job. Don't ever do it. Do a, do a stable job, like, you know, accounting or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. But, just, yeah. but just going on what you said, um, this is my first ever convention. I've never been to anything like this before. And just every single person that's come up to me and spoken to me is just amazing. It is so nice to have done something where people come up to you and genuinely love what you have done and genuinely yeah. believe that you have changed their life. I and yeah. that is probably mm. the best thing about being on television or something like that, where you can do something where every, all these people will see it regardless of what situation they are in their life and they can somehow make it their own and they come up to you and thank you for something that they saw you do on a screen and that is such a gratifying experience. So thank you, every single person that's come up Great to me today. Thank you so much. Yeah. And that is and, really and cool. Kid, I just want to say to the kid as well. Kid, the thing is, is that the one thing that will connect you to every other person in this room, regardless of nationality and age, will be story at some level. Uh, you know, the world is full of political conflict right now. I have to say, like, it was incredible to be part of Spartacus because it was a story that lasted since 74 BC because it was about equalizing people. It was about people trapped, people being able to escape that feeling of being a, a slave or a prisoner. And that, that pride that everybody wants, that ability to live on your own feet, standing on your own feet, it was a universal message. There's two ladies over here from Japan Darling, can you, can, you, can you two just stand up for a second? Do you mind standing Hi. up? They flew all the way from Japan to come and say hello to the Crixus, to, to the Spartacus uh, cast, because we mean something in Japan. You know, I've, I've, been to, I've been to the Middle East, and I've got women looking through their burqa saying, oh, good warriors on, on Spartacus. Yeah, you know, I mean, we were, we were part of, you know, we, we were just lucky. We were actors, but we were actually part of a force and an energy that 
that affected the planet, you know, and, and we're, we're, you know, we're thankful, thankful for you to coming and looking at us and saying you're connected, because that's yes. all we try to do as well. I think seriously, Spot, I guess. everything, I, I second everything that uh, says Romano said and all this stuff, but seriously, if you want to be an actor, uh, just watch me. Walk the catwalk, walk it, go Nick. <laughs>